And the operative word here is thinks. He has v4 and v6. So he has an interface that for some reason thinks it has an IPv4 and IPv6 address. It will use the IPv6 stack. Why? We want to move to v6. It's the right thing to do. Okay. So if a customer has misconfigured IPv6 on his local LAN because some box is announcing itself as a router and and he's going out to the internet right now using IPv4 just like we all are. Everything's fine. When someone puts a quad A record for www.foo.com and they put a quad A that says I can be reached via V6, the poor user who thinks he has V6 connectivity now starts sinking packets into a black hole router that can't get them anywhere. So you had connectivity. Someone puts a quad A IPv6 record in for a public web server. Suddenly that web server is unreachable because the local user has broken v6 connectivity. How many broken users have IPv6? How many IP how many public users have local broken IPv6 connectivity? 0.1%. It turns out there's a lot of places where you might be getting a v6 address assigned to you that goes to nowhere. Okay? A lot of corporate networks have a mistake. They actually have someone turned on and routing v6 with no external v6 connectivity. Sometimes vendors help us with this too. There are home gateways and OSs that when acting as a gateway announce themselves as a v6 router even if they can't get anywhere. Okay? So the reason Google doesn't put in www google.com and add an IPv6 quad A record is because 0.1% of the people who tried to access it would run into a problem. Now, does that really matter? Well, you know, you make your money on advertising and, and click throughs and you have these pagers come up and 0.1% means 0.1% of your revenue is gone. Multiply billions by 0.1%, yeah, it turns out to be a pretty big problem as it turns out. Now, it's getting better. That used to be 0.5%. It used to be a whole percent five years ago. About 0.5 last year is about 0.1% this year. So when you put a quad A record, when you add AAAA, an IPv6 record for your public web server, recognize some people can't get to you anymore. Now those people who can't get to you anymore are broken, okay? Uh, stupid people, but that's okay. Um, they can't get to you anymore. If you look at Aaron's website, you'll find we have a quad A in. You look at a lot of websites, we've put quad A in. This means that some people can't get to us. Well, people can't get to us, probably people we don't need to talk to. They'll figure out how to fix the problem if they want to get to our website. Um, I'm not saying every business can do this. Google can't. Facebook has v6.facebook.com. But no, they have not put a quad A record on www.facebook.com. Again, 0.1% of a business is pretty big for some people. We're trying to fix broken V6 islands that are out there. If you happen to see that you have a V6 address on your local LAN and you know you don't have any V6 connectivity, go fix your router. It's sending router advertisements out and it shouldn't because it's not connected anywhere. It shouldn't be saying it can get anywhere if it can't go anywhere. So, this is a pretty hard challenge. You need to put a V6 address out there. You need to be ready for IPv6. Depending on your business, I may tell you you need to be ready but use a different domain name for now. If you're a business that lives and dies on page views, okay, and number of clicks and advertisements served, okay, you might not want to put it in. Or if you put it in, you have to realize you're going to get customer calls. Okay. But for the vast majority of people, put it in. If, if you can, if you, if you want to be ready for a very large number of users who are accessing you via V6, you should start preparing now. Enterprise customers. Mail web application service must be reachable via V6 in addition to V4. Open a dialogue with your ISP to get V6 connectivity. It's not very hard. But we can't tell you to deploy this. This is North America. Canada, US, Caribbean. In other parts of the world, they solve this problem much easier. They tell someone, if you want a business license to be an ISP, you'll turn on V6. If you want a business license in order to be a public content site, you'll turn on V6. There are parts of the world, like South Korea, Singapore, um, where, well, you have to be careful. You're not supposed to litter. Um, but on the other hand, you also have very high V6 deployment, okay? That's not how we run North America. Just really not the way it's being done. So I can't tell you you have to turn this on. What I will tell you is 
You probably need to take your public website and know what happens when you put a V6 address. I have a private website. I actually went out and turned on V6 one day, yeah, put the interface on, configured Apache, everything was great. 6 a.m. the next morning, my website disappeared. Apache was gone, exit zero, out the door, couldn't find it anymore. Had to go look. Turns out, I had some scripts that I wrote that process log files. A lot of people process log files, as it turns out, because you want to know where you're being accessed from or you want to know what addresses they are. And it turns out I wrote a script that never thought about an IPv6 address being processed. And Perl is Perl and we all know what it does and, you know, it does what it wants to do. Um, that's what's going to break, guys. It's not Apache and it's not your, your OS. What's going to break is all your scripts that use IP addresses in them. Any configuration file, you got a, a, a people out there who have little databases that they've set up where they type in 16 characters. That's going to break. For larger organizations, you got a help desk system, okay? Remedy, clarify, RT, request tracker. You've set up fields. Oh, field, IP address. Yeah, try typing in 40 characters into that field, okay? Someone can't call in and open a problem with IPv6 until you've tested your tools with IPv6. So I highly recommend. Get in the lab, set up two machines, turn on IPv6, run your applications, run your public facing web server, process your logs, open a ticket, see what it does before you have to do this because someone runs down the hall and screams at you, we need to have IPv6 connectivity. And they will. If you don't have IPv6 turned on, then what's going to happen is that at some point you're going to be streaming video or streaming audio or you're going to be doing Skype and it's going to go to pieces because of the latency and jitter. And then someone's going to tell you to upgrade and if you, you have a choice. You can either do this in advance and be ready or you can be told, yeah, this weekend you need to upgrade. Sorry, I don't care. You know, we have a new business partner and they said we're on the old network and I don't know why but, but go fix this. Unless you like crash weekend projects upgrading your public infrastructure to V6, this is probably one you want to lay in a little earlier. Equipment vendors, software vendors. This is actually pretty cool. Um, Here's a demand curve that's going to go from zero to 100 percent a year and a half from now and no one knows about it. I was talking to Vaughn, Voice on the Net, big conference, packet networks, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, the folks at Vaughn were like, this is pretty cool. One guy got up, he said, John, you're telling me that some of my customers are going to want to have PBX support for IPv6, SIP over IPv6, and most people don't know about this. And they're going to want it because, well, they may have new sites connected with V6 only. And if they go back, if they try to use carrier gateways and SIP, it's not going to work. Um, this is great. I want to tell my marketing team to build this, my product team, build this. He says, I want one favor. I'm like, okay, sure. What do you want? He says, stop talking about this. I don't want my competitors to know <laughs> that <laughs> they need to have IPv6 turned on. If you build hardware or software that speaks to the public internet, you need to pay attention to the fact that you're going to have people asking you for IPv6 about a year from now. Probably not right now, but about a year from now you're going to start seeing the demand and it is happening. I know the database vendors the other day were beginning to get requests from it. I, I had one call me up literally like, what's this V6 thing? And I'm like, oh boy, here's a conversation. Um, so this is going to go from zero to 100 percent very quickly, particularly if you're hardware. Guys, if you build, you know, programmable logic arrays and ASICs and like that, you need a year. You should be working on this now. Government, I kind of talked about this. Um, we don't, at Aaron, we don't advocate any public position for this, meaning it's not our job to work with the government and tell them that they should tell everyone to deploy V6. No. But um, we do work with the government so they know what's coming up. Um, we actually have worked pretty heavily with the U.S. government and the Canadian government. Both of them have IPv6 roadmaps for their own systems. You'll be hearing more about that later on this year. Um, this is actually more important than people think. The reason your routers and firewalls support IPv6 is because in 2005 we did a memorandum with the U.S. government that mandated every U.S. government network had to be IPv6 capable. And in fact in 2008, uh, by June 30th, uh, a number of them turned on IPv6, pinged each other with IPv6 packets and then very quickly uh, turned it back off, really quickly. Um, because a lot of them had routers that worked with v6 but no firewalls. Um, so the fact of the matter is that people were like, well, why bother? Why bother having the federal government do that? U.S. federal government buys $61 billion worth of IT systems and services each year.
When the US government in 2005 mandated IPv6 capable networks, a number of major router vendors stood up and said, oh, that's us, right? Okay. Yeah, we'll go do that and put it into their main code base. The US government's now working on standards for IPv6 for public websites, which should help the load balancer acceleration crowd to get products in place so that if we need these two years from now, they'll actually be available for commercial people. So we try to prime the pump with the government wherever possible. Um, that's about it. So what if you want to do V6? Well, first, you can do it in your lab. You can grab private address space, work with it. You want to do it on the public network, get address space from an ISP or from us. IPv6 connectivity. Native is ideal from your ISP. You can get tunnels. I, there was a talk earlier this week, very nice, talked about setting up tunnels. There's a number of tunnel brokers out there that will let you tunnel V6 over V4 so you can get connectivity, make sure your site works, see the implications. Check your operating system, software, network management tool. You're pretty good on the OSs. That stabilized a lot. Um, uh, Ubuntu Debian had some real issues two years ago that I was busy screaming with people about code trees. Um, we're okay there. Your network management tools are really where you need to pay attention. Router firewall and other hardware upgrades. It is possible your router vendor will tell you, oh yeah, that supports V6. Oh, but that's in a different license category. So all you need to do is send us money, okay? Um, I'm not saying that's not the case. Well, okay. Think about the fact that over the next three years, you're probably going to upgrade it anyway. Just make sure when you replace the silly thing that you get V6 in the replacement. Because when you're buying a new one, they'll throw it in for free. I guarantee it. Just make sure you get it. Don't buy new gear that you may have to turn on V6 on in two years and find out you didn't get it. Uh, resources. www.aaron.net slash knowledge slash V4 V6. Again, if you have broken V6 connectivity, you can't get to this, but that's okay. Um, <laughs> social media, uh, www.teamaron.net. You can get to it over IPv4. You can get to it over IPv6, but don't have broken V6 connectivity because that will slow you down. Um, Teamaron.net is where we have an, a list of all the presentations we've done. You can download this presentation. You can give this presentation to someone else. I highly encourage that. Uh, www.getipv6.info, we have implementation notes there. It's a wiki. Log on, see what's out there. When someone learns something, they put slide decks or notes up there. Uh, if you happen to have some learning, put it up there. You know, we all know how this works. Um, and we have a lot of information, obviously. The policies that we use to allocate IP addresses are set by you, i.e., the public community. You don't have to be a member of Aaron. Anyone can participate in the policy discussion. As we continue to slice and dice the remaining IPv4 address space and fairly allocate it out, there's a lot of interest in what policies we use. If you want to know what policies are being used and what changes to policies are being used, www.aaron.net slash participate. You can see the policy process. You can see you can participate in Aaron entirely online. Mailing lists and the meetings are all remote cast so you can participate, ask questions online, the full thing. You don't need to go to our, our exotic meeting locations. Um, that's about all I have. Uh, fellowship program. If you know of someone who wants to participate in Aaron and can't afford it, we actually give out fellowships. Um, I think the fellowship program is open for another three days or four days for the next meeting, but it opens every six months because we have two meetings a year. You can apply for the fellowship program. We'll pay your tuition, it would pay your flight, hotel, and, and meeting expenses to come out. So you can get involved in Aaron even if you can't afford to get involved in Aaron. Um, and uh, no, no booth, don't worry about that. I'll take this down. Okay. So um, that's it. Thank you. And questions? Questions here? If you want to follow up with questions across the hall on Capri 114. Yes, question. This is a crisis much larger than Y2K. The government's been a little busy with other things recently, uh, the US government. Um, this will end up becoming Y2K, you could test your own systems in the lab and know how you do. In this case, your systems have to speak IPv6 in addition to V4 for customers who are coming on to ISPs you don't know. So we knew when Y2K was. It was probably the only thing we did know is we knew when it was going to occur. This is a moving date of uncertain impact 
that affects everybody globally.